coming to you somewhat live from a desk somewhere in the Pacific Northwest. Let's hang out. What is going on? Welcome back, friends, listeners from wherever you are. People who are just tuning in for the first time. People who have been here multiple times. It's another Wednesday. I mean, it's time to hang out. It's been a little bit of chaos getting things going. Getting some of this reorganized after the uh, tech issues we had. Um, getting back on top of things here. Getting things rolling. Good to go. Can we try something a little different this time and throw these out early and then just recap at the end. So if you guys are new, checking things out, like what you hear, regular listener, maybe you want to find out more about what's going on, check out the podcast on all the social networks we have. Facebook, TikTok, uh, Twitter, Instagram, all of them. At Let's Hang Out Pod. you find them pretty much everywhere. Uh, currently working on getting some of the new stuff set up that's coming out. Uh, we have a Hive social account, which I don't know how active that one's going to be, if I'm being completely honest with you, but we'll try to figure that out. Um, as well as Threads. Threads is new. Working on getting that situated. But yeah, feel free to check us out on any of those, or you can find the links to everything, every place that we are listed, including other sources to listen to the podcast, uh, on our link tree, which is in the description on any of the social pages. Uh, and you can find that at linktr.ee slash let's hang out pod. All the information for you there. So we're here. We're here to talk. It's normally what we do. Normally what I do is I come in and I'll bring a topic and talk a little bit about it and kind of associate it with what's going on in my world and hopefully get you guys to kind of vibe and resonate with it a little bit and, you know, maybe learn something from it. Maybe it's something you can share information on. We've had quite a few people that have sent messages about what they've listened to or topics that were brought up, which is super cool. I'm currently working on getting an anonymous messaging system put in place on uh, either Instagram or Twitter so that way questions can come in and hopefully we can host a separate just listeners question section for you know a special podcast or even on the socials do it on like tiktok or something so anyway we're here and i'm i'm talking and you're listening that's kind of how this works with the podcast but are you really listening and i ask that because today's topic is something that i i've really had to take some time to reflect on a little bit uh it's a skill that i've had to go through and basically unlearn old habits and relearn how to be more active at my listening. Um, and that's, again, listening. That's the topic. Just for sake of definition, for what people know, many people, I'm sure, have thrown it out there and either don't know what it is or think of it in a little different perspective of what it actually means. Um, but I like to go through and I've, I've taught myself how to be more of an active listener. So that phrase itself, active listening, um, is going beyond just the words that somebody says and really trying to understand what message they're trying to convey. Whether that's the context of what they're saying, how they're saying it, the facial expressions being used, uh, context clues and learning to look and read into those and not react just from the gut, but to really listen and to actively listen. It's a skill that I wish more people had. And I say I wish more people had that skill and knew what that skill was and how to use it appropriately. I mean, we all listen for the most part. There's some of us that are very selective listeners and I can openly say that being one of those who was very subconsciously a selective listener. I wanted to listen to people but my brain tunes things out. <laughs> it's that, that ADHD that I was talking about in our earlier episodes, that undiagnosed ADHD where I feel like my brain just kind of goes bloop and I'm gone, you know? Be mid-conversation, something clicks, and I'm just like staring at a wall, staring into the void, going, hmm, I wonder. <laughs> so, we want to get past that. We want to get past the, uh, the just listening and really hear what people are saying and process it, because there's value in it. You know, it's paying full attention and encouraging others that are listening to also be present, which is kind of what I do on this podcast, without really saying too much about it. And I think this is really the first time kind of acknowledging it, so it's in a way, kind of a fourth wall break, maybe. <laughs> I guess you could look at it that way. But uh, it's, it's encouraging you guys to also be actively listening to how the messages are coming across. Because even in a story or in an episode where I have an interview with a friend or a guest or something on here, the episode with James 
Um, the very first one was a great one, talking about all of our nerdy things and just kind of really listening to that and how much we're enjoying life. You know, we're, just, we're not just living and going through day by day, but we're actually enjoying the things we're doing. You know, we've got our, our nerdy fascinations that we enjoy, our games, our anime, um, our personal lives, our wives, our kids, my kids, um, things like that. It, it's listening and hearing that message and hearing how that's coming across. But it's also engaging in that conversation, not just letting those topics hit flat and just nothing, you know? It's also processing and showing empathy where it's needed and trying to validate feelings when they come up, you know? When somebody's mad or angry, uh, upset about something, and frustrated, all those all those negative things. Not really, I don't want to say negative, it's like the, the absolute, they're all negative feelings, but you know, those not positives that are coming across. And even the positives we want to go ahead and process and show that we're listening and show what's going on. Show that we're understanding what's going on. Um, it's going through and taking the time to make sure that people that are talking to you are being heard and really being heard. Because sometimes, and this is the scary part about where active listening can really be a, a tool to help you. There are times that you're going to talk to somebody who is in some serious pain and they're not trying to be out outright up front with it, but it's a cry for help. And that's where the listening kicks in. That's where finding those cues where you're like, mm, something, something feels off here. Something's not right. You might save a friend. You know, they might be in a dark spot. And being able just to click with them is all they need. They have that one person who's like, I get it, you know, <laughs> you can, you can meet on a level where you've gone through and experienced what they're going through or even relate in a way. Um, and that kind of tiptoes into the next portion of, of the act of listening is that if you're going to talk and you're going to have those conversations with somebody and you're going to try to relate, don't turn it back to you. Don't turn the conversation back to what you've gone through and have them focus on you. Keep it related to them stay on their side of things so they can talk because that's why they're there. If you were able to see that cue and respond, you might be the last person they get a chance to talk to. And it's, again, it's super, super kind of downer moment there, but it's the truth. And I can't tell you the number of times where I've been in a spot, in a dark spot, where I've been talking with people and you know, I'm having the conversation, ha ha, let's all laugh and have fun. But the real me is in the back of my mind sitting there going like, please, somebody just, just connect with me, please. And it's, it's hard. It's habits. We've grown up being told to suppress our feelings and keep it all tucked inside. You know, you don't want to show it in public and things like that. But amongst friends, you should be able to talk and feel comfortable. And being amongst friends, those friends should be able to actively listen. Truthfully. There's going to be times where you're just going to go to autopilot and listen to listen. But really, try to try to take that skill to the next level. Because you might save a friend who's really in need. Somebody who's hurting and it just needs to hear somebody else who can relate to them for just a few minutes, you know? But then taking that information... And to prove that you're listening, because you take it, you summarize it all together, you, you bundle all the information you just gathered, and you kind of relay it back in a way that shows that you're understanding without, you know, giving the lecture of, well, you said this and this and this, and again, stay on, stay on the level, stay related, you know? But it's, it's being able to rephrase everything that was just told to you in a few words, a few sentences, to get them to understand, like, yes, I heard you. I hear you loud and clear. And I'm here. <laughs> it changes everything, you guys. So when I'm talking about active listening and having to relearn things, again, it's that whole growing up and you're just told to pay attention. You know, in school and at home, even at home, unless you're really shown how to actively listen, it's just a matter of of sitting there and listening. That's what you're that's what you're taught is to yes sir, yes ma'am. Mhm, mm I hear it. And then go do the thing. But active listening 
is a whole different world. It clears up so much because it teaches you to truly connect with the people that you're talking to, to show that you're listening, to relay it back to them in a way that conveys that you understand what they were talking about, you relate to what they're talking about. And then most of all, it makes you ask questions. And clarity, clarity on things is one of the most important pieces of anything we do with communication. And I say that because we're in a world where trying to talk to somebody isn't just face to face. Sometimes it's through text messages or emails and things like that. And let's be real. A text message does not convey emotion very well because everybody wants, wants to pop an emoji or to put some kind of funny little um, acronym or shorten abbreviation of what they're trying to say. And between you and me, that might mean one thing, but talking to another friend, our little language we have doesn't translate to them. So it's hard. It's hard to get the message across in something like text messaging and emails and hope that it's being received the same way. But that's from me to you or me to whomever I'm talking to. As the listener, as the reader, as somebody who's getting that message and getting the information, I should be the one showing just as much effort and empathy and understanding and asking for clarity. Because if it comes across and it sounds harsh or it sounds like it's you know, super, super negative, or um, like they're mad at me, or they're upset with something going on, whatever the circumstance. As a listener, and as somebody who's connected with your friends, seeing those things, don't take it just at face value. Because again, that text does not show facial expressions, it does not carry emotion across, and that can set up a lot of problems. That can cause a lot of issues. So ask questions. Ask clarifying questions. Figure out what they're trying to say. Is what you're reading what came across? Is what you sent what you wanted to go across to your to whoever's listening to you? You know, that's that's kind of the big lesson. It's active listening. And it's active for a reason. So the other part of this asking questions and getting clarification on things, and again, this really relates to the world of texting and emails and, and the way we communicate nowadays. Um, is, is really to avoid misunderstandings. And that should be pretty obvious because not every message is gonna be read the same way. Like I was just saying, you have to ask, you want answers because you don't want things to be misunderstood. And at the same time, having that conversation and asking those questions and really trying to understand what that person's telling you and talking to you about, that builds a deeper connection, that, that builds a stronger connection with that person. So it might be a friend that you just met or somebody that you've known for years, or any of that, like, it's just, asking questions is, should be just common sense. But there's too many, too many people nowadays, at least from what I see and stories I've heard, where the conversation goes, oh, I received this message and they said this, so, you know, I'm done with that. And it's like, you didn't stop to ask. <laughs> you got a message and you assumed that it was worst case scenario or um you know and then the other side of the of the same coin instead of angry maybe it's that sad thing where you get a message and you're like well they're just really down so i don't i don't really want to hurt them anymore i'm not gonna mess with them i want them to have time and space maybe that reaching out is what they're trying to do maybe that message is trying to reach out and, and asking you for help without directly asking you for help and being an active listener being somebody who's asking those questions, that's how you find out and that's how you fix things. Because again, maybe that person is reaching out to you because you're their lifeline and they really need you. But you also have to encourage the same back. Encourage open conversation, open dialogue between each other. And sometimes it works. Sometimes that person will want to talk to you. If it's mad, sad, angry, whatever, sometimes they wanna have that conversation. And being open and listening will help build that connection. Um, but again, it's not everybody. So don't get discouraged if you try to open dialogue and that person immediately is just like, no, I'm not, not happening. You know, I'm, I've been hurt so many times or uh, I don't feel like talking about it or any of the excuses that come up. And uh, excuses, using that word very lightly. Um, 
hearing those things and hearing somebody say, no, I just, I really don't want to right now. There's the empathy of understanding. Okay, I get it, you're hurt. If you want to talk about it, we'll talk about it. I'm here. And sometimes that's all it takes. So I don't know if you guys have ever gone through that or if you're somebody who's a, you think you're a good listener, are you actively listening? Are you somebody who's really hearing what somebody's talking about and saying? Then if not, if you don't feel like you're a great listener, that's okay. You can always relearn and grow. You can lose and forget the old bad habits and do something new and be a positive influence going forward with this and showing others that you can listen. I've gone through this for years and I focused really, really hard on listening to people when they're talking to me because I don't like having things misconstrued. I don't like having a misunderstanding. That's why... Like, again, personally, when I message people, I don't shorthand. <laughs> I think the, the, the most I'll do is an LOL, uh, you know, an OMW for an on my way. But when it comes to having an actual conversation with somebody, I don't cut it short because I don't want there to be any question of what message I'm trying to send. And I understand my emotions not coming across. And I'm open to have that conversation to clarify things. And I've learned... I've learned over the years that there are just, there's some people that no matter what conversation you have with them or what connection you have, that they're just, they're not going to get it and they're going to take everything either the worst way possible, uh, that you're angry with them or that you don't have any, any real like value in what you're trying to say to them. You know, you're trying to have a conversation or you're trying to put some, something into the conversation. Maybe it's between a bunch of other people and they just look at what you're saying and go, eh, doesn't really matter. They're not. They don't care. And you're, you're trying to be involved, you know? I get it. I do. And that's why, like, when I have those conversations, when I text people, it is every word. My messages are long. They are clear. They are to the point. And if they're misread on the other side, again, I'm always open to have those conversations. And that's something I encourage everybody to do. You know, if you're having a chat, whether it's a happy one, a heated one, just be open to chat and clarify. Man, there's enough bad emotion in the world. There's enough bad attitudes around. If we can eliminate it just by asking some questions, absolutely, let's do it. So how about you guys? When's the last time you had a conversation and you were really, really listening and you felt like you made a connection? Let me know in the comments. Message me on any of the socials. I'm not going to run them all back to you guys. Did it at the beginning. Always active on Twitter. At Let's Hang Out Pod. You can use it everywhere. Please feel free to join the conversation anywhere using hashtag Let's Hang Out Pod. And let's let's do today's topic. Let's try this out because I've been wanting to do these for a while now and use hashtags for each of these episodes. Let's um let's call this the uh, value of listening. Hashtag value of listening. And tell me one of your stories. Tell me something that you've done where you've really shown the other person that you're listening and they've appreciated that. You know, and it doesn't have to be a major thing. I would love to hear those stories. I would love to know more about you guys and how you are actively engaged with your friends in conversation and getting clarity. But that's enough for me this week. I will catch you guys on the next episode, whenever that is, whatever it's about. Check back here every other Wednesday. Uh, a couple changes coming up in the future here. I'll make an announcement on the next episode. Um, get you guys ready to go for a fun summer event going on. And uh, yeah. I will see you guys on episode 15. Have a good one. Take it easy.